You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. Okay, so thanks for joining us on another episode of Manic Monday. We have very special guest, Mr. Shane Radliff, and hopefully, hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. I apologize if I didn't, uh, Mr. Radliff. Um, as a matter of fact, we're going to bring him on right now. Yeah, go promote him a panelist. Always takes a second. I have to invite them; they have to accept it. Hey, how you doing, sir? Oh, you know what? Let me unmute you. There we go. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. We're not doing bad at all over here. Our our other host, uh, Scott, should be with your uh, with us momentarily. Um, you know, we were looking over on the Liberty Under Attack we- uh, Attack website, and honestly, I was really impressed with a lot of stuff going on over there. You know, and there are several things. There's one thing that I actually saw it was after the fact that I already sent you an email. <laughs> I have it up on my screen. I'd like to actually talk to you about it because I actually <laughs> laughed about it. Not laughed like I was making fun of the article, but kind of laughing because I was in agreement with it, <laughs> you know, right. 100%. So uh, why don't you let everybody here know, I mean, uh, who are you? What do you do? What do you have got, you know, what do you have going on? Sure, sure. Well, first off, I, I certainly appreciate the invitation to come on. Um, but yeah, my name is uh, Shane. I uh, turned 27 last month. I'm a homesteader located in Southern Illinois. Uh, I've got about 22 acres out here, and I'm hoping to be uh, fully off grid uh, in the next handful of years or so. We'll uh, we'll see uh, how that goes, though. Um, but yeah, more more into my work in the in the alternative media. I'm a free market anarchist, a crypto anarchist uh, who focuses solely on solutions. Uh, the question I, I I focus on is how can individuals increase their personal freedom uh, despite the quickly uh, accelerating uh, totalitarianism uh, throughout uh, throughout the world. So right. um, that's uh, that's my focus, and uh, that's what we discuss on uh, the Vanu podcast. Uh, and it's uh, really where my passions lie. Uh, you know, I went through all the uh, the, ph- the philosophy stuff, economics, all that. Um, but I got to a point where it's okay. I've, I've, I have a good enough understanding of this. Uh, can we find freedom now, please? Uh, can we can we right. start doing? Can we start doing things? So um, <laughs> I yeah. totally agree with that. <laughs> right on. Um, so yeah, I guess the the last the last little tidbit is uh, I uh, run uh, Liberty Anti Publications, a uh, publishing company uh, assisting authors uh, throughout the publishing process. We do uh, we do uh, proofreading and editing, full audiobook production. Uh, we can do, uh, you know, marketing videos and things like that. Uh, cover design, paperback formatting, uh, all of it. Because um, I, I published my book last year, and uh, well, uh, um, I mean, it was a difficult process. I ordered, you know, five proof copies because I couldn't get the formatting right, which you know that tossed you know twenty dollars down the drain. Oh, um, so I, and uh, obviously, audiobooks take a lot of time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, learning post production, all that. It's really difficult, but you have to have an audiobook for your book. And I'm actually slacking on that, uh, so don't don't uh, don't don't do what I'm doing. Uh, make sure to have an audiobook for your book. Uh, that's uh, that's right. certainly crucial. So I, I realize that a lot of these things are complicated. Uh, if someone's going to write one book. Uh, it's uh, you know, well, I do encourage you know self directed self directed you know learning and things. Um, not everyone's going to want to uh, invest all the time to learn all those skills. So that's what we do sure. over there. Uh, we also find some uh, really cool books on uh, on strategy. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. to increase uh, individuals' uh, personal freedom. So um, right. that's uh, that's the. Basically, uh, basically it. No, very cool, very cool. Well, I noticed that that one of my things is is the whole Vanu. I mean, can you? What, I mean, I know, obviously that's an acronym for something. I mean, what exactly is that? Is it just a, simply a podcast, or does it actually have a meaning? Because I noticed there were several things in there about the foundations of Vanu and mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So, what exactly is that? Sure. So, so uh, Vanu is an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable. So, uh, kind of the libertarian non-aggression principle, uh, you know, the initiation of force is immoral. Um, voluntary, part of that, just meaning all interaction should be voluntary. So, voluntary, <laughs> not vulnerable. Um, so, not being vulnerable to the coercion of the state, not being vulnerable to the coercion of this of uh, just individuals who would violate your person or property. Um, sure. So, this is a freedom strategy based upon uh, you know, uh, in- investigating potential strategies that could make one more invulnerable to the coercion of the state uh, and the servile society. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, you know, getting to the definitions. But uh, but yeah, there's there's quite a storied history with it. Um, I found uh, a couple of years ago, I found a book uh, called Vaughn of the Search for Personal Freedom uh, on uh, on Amazon. And uh, 
I didn't know what it was, but uh, you know, I placed the order for it, and uh, it was uh, a collection of articles written from 1967 to 1974. Um, the guy's uh, the guy the guy's name uh, was uh, uh, pseudonym uh, Rayo, mm -hmm. um, and he uh, he was a uh, you know just uh, a libertarian that's uh, kind of in the same position that I was. He was in uh, Southern California, where there are a lot of libertarians, so there's a lot of uh, you know meetings, a lot of talking, philosophizing, and he realized you know, kind of the same revelation that I had. Well, why are we just, why are we still talking? Like we, let's, let's do something. So um, <laughs> right. they weren't, they weren't, they weren't having it though. So uh, he, he moved out of his apartments to a camper right, on his pickup truck and he uh, lived uh, as a van nomad for a while. So he traveled around uh, and lived out of, uh, lived out of uh, an RV. Um, but he realized that wasn't, or to him, that wasn't enough freedom. So he actually took it um, to the very drastic ends. Uh, and he uh, uh, pursued wilderness fauna. So he lived in a, uh, in a tent out in uh, the Siskiyou National Forest, uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon. Um, oh, wow. So they took, they went, real, they went uh, you know, really, really far with it. Um, obviously, I tell that story kind of tongue in cheek because once you, once you kind of, I, and I, I love to introduce it because they're like, oh, it's one of these strategies. Oh, it's, I'm not interested in that. But it's far more expansive than that. That's just uh, one right. potential, potential strategy. Um, among uh, among many things, so um, that's kind of uh, you know the the brief history and uh, definition. Well, you know, I noticed on the website you when know, I was perusing through there um, on the one section where you're able to download that book. You can download the PDF or the Word document. It it won't let you do it. I don't know if you knew that. It won't let you download it oh. at all. Yeah, any okay. of the Word documents, um, or the yeah. PDFs. Just an FYI for you, because I was on a download. Thank you for so. that. So I didn't know. Right. Yeah, I, I need to. Yeah, I need to get on that. Uh, I, my my host changed servers, um, and we've had some issues. We're we're still tracking down all the bugs, so I do appreciate that. No, 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 no problem at all. You know, I mean, I want to talk about this whole tyranny uh, of the code. That I mean, I have it up <laughs> here. Can uh, can you tell us a bit about tyranny of the code? Yeah, so basically, this was a uh, a term that I I, uh, I took from a, a tech podcaster named Brian Sovereign. But the idea is basically. That um, a lot of these uh, these open source tools that uh, you know are made uh, you know per, for personal freedom can also be can also be used for uh, very malicious ends. Um, so when you're talking about uh, you know uh, really uh, you know really advanced technology, well, governments can pick that up and use it too. Um, right. So it's basically uh, to me, it's basically just um, a, a very short phrase to explain that uh, technologies can be used for good uh, or for evil, or they can be used to increase personal freedom, or they can be used to drastically uh, restrict personal personal freedom. So um, that was, uh, that was uh, um, so yeah, the, the article you're referencing is actually one that I wrote uh, um, called the, the Hopeful End of Coinbase, which, mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically that, that one, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a centralized Bitcoin exchange. Um, they're terrible on privacy. They report you to the IRS. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of really, really bad things. So that was an article a couple of years ago. Um, basically just, uh, you know, more revelations about their, their very nefarious activities, um, you know, with, uh, with the federal government and uh, also just uh, invasions of privacy. So, um, so yeah, well, well I, I do think, uh, you know, as I'm wearing a Bitcoin shirt. I think Bitcoin is absolutely huge for personal freedom, um, for, for monetary freedom, uh, being your own bank rather than relying on a central institution or fiat money um, right. or, or things like that. I think it's, it's totally, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely um, huge for personal freedom. But uh, at the same time, uh, we're also seeing some, some negative uh, aspects, of, you know, some negative uh, things too, um, like lobbying with governments and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin Foundation lobbying the government and uh, Fenson and all those agencies. So um, there's there's a lot of promise, but uh, got to be uh, for those of us who are trying to, uh, you know, make it a tool for personal freedom. We've got a lot of work to do uh, because right. the, pe the people on the other side have a lot more time and money um, <laughs> on, uh, on, on in their hands. So, right. So, I mean, so let me ask you, I understand the whole Bitcoin thing. I mean, me personally, I I. Let's just say if the crap hit the fan, you know, I mean, and let's say we had an EMP or something happened, then what good would be a, a Bitcoin be to somebody? I mean, I mean, it's a legitimate yeah, it's a question. question. I'm not doubting you, but it's a legitimate question. A lot of people have asked before on our show. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, that's a very fair question. And um, it's one that I've that I've, I've thought about, too. And I'm still not 100 percent sure on the answer. Like there, there's some really cool things happening um, kind of uh, off grid, off grid Bitcoin transactions. There's an organiz or a company called TX Tenna. Um, mm -hmm. And they're doing some stuff with mesh networking too. So they're they're routing Bitcoin trans transactions through mesh networks. So there's oh, a lot okay. of really cool stuff going on. But um, but but yeah, like I, I've thought about that too. So okay, if you know SA, if you know if, uh, if crap hit the fan, then uh, you know how how would you know steps A, B, C, D, and E be done in a Bitcoin transaction? Right. And right. Uh, so obviously ma making the payments. Um, I mean, I, I don't think there'd be any issue with that. But the the problem I would I would see coming in is that um, if if it was like kind of a worldwide thing. 
um, and not just in a specific country, um, there's, a, there's a lot of electricity needs to be used to power mining, mining rigs. So if there's not a lot of electricity going, if there's not a lot of electricity, I don't know how that, I don't know how that will play out. Uh, right. I have no idea whatsoever. So, uh, so yeah, if, if it was a kind of a grid down situation, um, I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know if, uh, if Bitcoin would be of much use. Um, it would obviously depend upon uh, the situation. If it, was some, if it was something that just happened in, say, the United States, and uh, you know, there's a lot of Chinese miners or something like that, then um, it, would still, it would still be possible. If it was some sort of you know, right. worldwide calamity, yeah, right. I don't know. Well, that's, I, I guess that's kind of why I was like, okay, well, I was talking about more like silver. You know, and even when, let's say if the crap did hit the fan, you know, things like sugar and coffee and tobacco and things of that nature, alcohol even, you know, that kind of stuff would be a great bartering item and kind of would be the, the, the currency. I mean, if we're really, you right. know, shut down, I mean, heck, you can even go as far as saying toilet paper might be currency for all we know. I mean, it's been trading, you know, bargaining item. I mean, I mean, but the possibilities are endless, you know, I mean, we don't really know until we get there, you know, but when it comes to Bitcoin, I do like it. I like it very, and forgive me for my ignorance. I'm I'm unfamiliar with it, you know. And and, mm -hmm. and uh, but at the same time, I do kind of like the aspect of having that versus you know what we're kind of going through now with the Federal Reserve. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I really right. can't say too much about it because you know I don't know too much about it. I've kind of like mm -hmm. you know preparing and stocking up for trading and bargaining items. So, um, but what I do very little know about it. I mean, I would much rather go with something like that, have that versus, you know, a, a corrupt Federal Reserve with the their henchmen of the IRS and, and things of that nature, you know, because those, they're right. not even government entities. They're not even constitutional to begin with, you know. Yep. Yeah. So, to totally agree. Totally agree. I, I, that's just, um, this is my co-host, Scott, just not to interrupt or anything like that. He came on here with us. How you doing, brother? I'm doing really good. Good, and good. Just to get into this real quick. Um I, I did come up with an article from, uh, I believe this is like an older article from you, uh, The 50 Things to Do Now. Yep. Yes, I, yep. That, that was perfect. I mean, <laughs> I think that people should actually, you know, view this article, and I'll, I'll be sharing it, but I, I do believe that this is something that, you know, people should actually take a look at and actually get a, involved in, you know, in the locally sourced Right. Yeah. And that was actually, that's, I, I didn't even write that article. I took it from a website called interplex.net. Um, right. But yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, there's, I think I repost a lot of stuff from there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, you'll find a lot of that stuff uh, at libertyandertack.com and also volneypodcast.com. That's, that's, we're, we're all about doing. I'm um, sure there, there's some philosophizing here and there, but, um, but generally we're focused on uh, what we can do uh, in the here and now to increase uh, personal freedom. Right. Well, you had mentioned something earlier about, um, Basically, the technology, government corruption, it can be used for good, it can be used for nefarious reasons or, or what have you. And we see that there – I mean I kind of want to elaborate more on that and talk more on that. I mean because we see a lot that – I mean there's a lot of great technology out there, you know, and we, we see that – how can I expect – they give us that illusion. I always tell everybody that everything is an illusion. Nothing is is what it seems, you know. Uh, give you an example. Um, they give us the illusion of choice. We go into the voting booth. We have a plethora of people to choose from. Hell, we can't even put in our own name. But we always end up to Democrat and Republican every stinking time, you know. Or mm -hmm. they give us the illusion that we have freedom, but what they've done is take away our natural, unalienable rights, and they sell them back to us in the guise of freedom in the form of licenses and permits, mm -hmm. you know. So everything yep. is an illusion. Nothing is just what it seems. So we – well. We see these great technologies that are coming out there, and they put it out there and give us the illusion of we're going to use it for good things, and you turn out and you know you're using it for for bad things. And I'm sure you, I mean, you're, you're a smart man. You know, I'm sure you've even heard of these instances, maybe even seen them yourself, where people have come out with inventions themselves, and then all of a sudden these people end up dead, or they end up they coming up missing. Their patents are stolen. Mm -hmm. Their 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 uh, invention per se is stolen, and then you hear nothing else about it. Let me get your take on right. all that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess, uh, uh, I guess to um, to the point, uh, you know, kind of the the berry technology. I mean, yeah. There's, uh, um, I mean, uh, I mean, we what we we don't know. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. Um, right. Uh, but at the same time, um, you got to know that there are a lot of special vested interests, like uh, like with Stanley Myers hydrogen car. Um, that's uh, that's on the uh, Libertarian Attack websites. Um, I mean, uh, you know, that would that would have been uh, you know very damaging to to the to the car industry. 
Um, oh yeah. So I, I mean, there's there's a lot of dimensions like that where yeah they 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 would uh, they would change things drastically and and there's you know very uh, you know structurally sound vested interests that have been there for a long time that can uh, that can see to it that those things don't happen. Um, mm -hmm. But but then again, I mean we 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 just don't know for for a lot of these things. Um, but yeah, as far as far as technology more generally, um, you know the the internet's uh, kind of the best example, right? I mean uh, there are a lot of uh, you know media outlets uh, like yours, there are outlets like mine. There's there's all, all sorts of podcasts, all sorts of great information out there people can go to and that thing do you know it's 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 a it's a huge resource and a, and a great tool um but at the same time um if you think about the average computer users um you know how locked down and controlled their their uh you know browsing activity is uh like for google um i, I don't know if you've ever and this is an interesting experiment just with just with netflix but uh you know look at uh, look at what's uh, like you you know what's what's on your netflix but right. uh, if you go on to someone else's, it's completely different. There's not a, a similar thing on there. So the algorithm is controlling what you watch. So like just like with Google searches, um, a lot of that stuff's filtered out, obviously, the information they don't want people to know. But um, but even then, I mean, uh, it's so focused. You know, the alg alg algorithms are focused on what you're already interested in. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's very much... Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a, a negative. I, I think that's a negative use of the technology, obviously. But then, but then again, I mean, uh, there's... Uh, um, like I said, a lot of great media outlets, uh, lots of great, lots of great resources, and then the internet's enabled uh, like things like Bitcoin and uh, you know email, um, which that may sound weird to people, but I'm talking more like encrypted email, which I still use on a, on a daily basis. Right. Um, I mean, all of these tools that you know the internet's or that that uh, that have been built on top of the internet, um, it's it's incredible. Um, it really is. Um, I'll mention a couple of other ones like Tor and I2P uh, Internet Visibility right. Project. Um, and then obviously just all the all sorts of open source projects that are going on that I'm so interested in. Um, but uh, it's kind of a, a very, you know, niche thing. You got to be super interested in it. But uh, there, there's a lot of good stuff. But yeah, as, as we're kind of talking about, um, yeah, double edged sword. It's going to be used for nefarious <laughs> purposes. No, absolutely. I mean, we see it all the time. I mean, well, the general, non, non -stop. general public can see it all the time if they use VC's book because of the fact that all the ads are directly, you know, added to your interests. Right. Yeah. I mean, as soon as they pop up, I mean, all of a sudden you get you're sitting there watching your funny cat videos or whatever, and next thing you know, you got this <laughs> stupid ad popping up, and it's it's whatever you you've recently clicked on, browsed at, you know, passed by frequently, mm -hmm. and it's just the algorithm just popping more stuff up that you'd be interested in. Now, there's also other things out there that are now allowing you. Uh, to monitor your home and the usage of your products because of the fact that it's going to start automatically ordering this stuff for you. Right. Like when you're, when you're out of it or when you're running low, you can just say, you know, oh, 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 oh my God, I'm running low on my, my toilet paper. And next thing you know, you, next couple of days, you got an order of toilet paper sitting at your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's like it's like it's like point of sale for 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 houses. Um, yeah, yeah, all the all right. the smart houses and stuff. That's another very negative. I think a negative. Uh, I mean, it might be very convenient for some folks, um, but as far as like the all, all the main the mainstream versions version ones uh, or the main versions. Um, I mean, uh, you I, I, you can find all sorts of creepy articles about uh, you know weird things that those that those have done, and, and I mean, obviously, all of those things are spying on you at all times. The, the um, Alexa, the, the, the Google. I mean, as soon know, as you talk all, to it, it starts doing some well, funny it, things. Well, it has it has to be listening, right? It has to listen yeah. for you. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, and then and then to to take it uh, another step further, I don't know if this ever happened to either of you guys, but where you've just been thinking about something and like you're scrolling through you know fascist book or something, and like yeah. an ad pops up for it. Yep. Yeah. Um, like it, it's, uh, it makes know. you it's, wonder. It's, yeah, it's, it's creepy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Well, you know, that, and not. I don't want to try to you know go off the the Alex Jones wagon. <laughs> Alex Jones wagon and go, go into a major conspiracy theorist stuff, and then sound like a coop tinfoil hat. But you know, I mean, there is talk about how you know we have this five G going on there, and of course that being a high frequency. And I'm not sure if you know anything about this. If you do please let me let us know. But uh, apparently the 5G has high frequencies, you know, which disrupts with our normal frequencies. And, you know, and I need to look into it more, but there was this documentary that I was, I was trying to watch where it was talking about how those frequencies can interrupt our frequencies. It can actually talk to us, to, you know, in our minds and put voices in hmm. one's head, you know. So I kind of wanted to look more into that and see, you know, what, what's going on with that. They're able to put voices in people's head. Is that why some people are sitting there lately saying, I hear – I'm." They think God's talking to them or something like that and convince them to go ahead and do this and that and say this and that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's a fact, but yeah, I, is it a possibility? Sure. 
Yeah, I, I don't know much about the I don't know about, don't know much about the five G thing. Uh, um, a colleague of mine, Derek Bros, over at the Contra Resistance, has been doing a lot of uh, has been doing a lot of work on that uh, in Houston. Um, so he'd be the one to uh, to go to uh, to to learn more about that. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean there there's there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of weird stuff. I'm not sure if you've uh, and and this was a couple of years ago when I looked into it. But uh, since since we're on the subject, I'll bring it up. Uh, um, there was uh, a um, oh, what was it called? Um, Oh gosh, I can't remember. Yeah, just just slipped my mind. Uh, targeted individuals. That's what mm -hmm. uh, that's what it is. Um, targeted individuals. I think it was uh, Truthstream uh, Media that put out a documentary on that, or or at least an interview. Um, but some some creepy stuff like that. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, kind of uh, kind of like what you said, living in an illusion. I mean, whatever technology. Uh, you know, you the, the government has. You think the government has today? It's probably a lot further along than that. So, oh, I'm sure. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to tell. Um, well, it's even with really, really hard to tell. G stuff. I mean, I, I've seen a video that was posted up by a, a friend of ours, and uh, I mean, the guy was sitting there saying, "I don't know if it was him specifically just giving out information or if he actually installs this stuff." But he was talking about how it, you know, yeah, the the waves that we deal with now, taking it straight onto the face or you know the radiation to our ears and whatnot. He said that it's just that over time you would need a longer time because it it's it's all dealing with band waves and, and how sharp the waves are and all that stuff and he was like you now with the 5g he was like they're pretty much like spikes he was like so you're generally going to be taking a a bigger radiated uh, um radiation amount to to whatever part of the body he said and um it's not going to be generally like your towers that they have now they'll have like a main tower putting off a signal, but then they're gonna have receivers put all around your town, up on your buildings, up on the billboards and everything, because everybody wants these speeds so fast and they, mm -hmm. they want them now. And they, he was like, you know, people would just wanna go through Facebook at, a, at an instant. And he was like, and I don't see why. He was like, it's, it's not my place to say. He said, but my thing is, he was like, I'm worried about what it's going to do to the uh, to the unborn fetus. He said, because the fact that you're taking sure. that much radiation, he said, it's pretty much going to start cooking any water inside of you. He oh, said, wow. just think about what the ambiotic fluid is. He was like, mm -hmm. it's mostly water. He said, so your babies are going to start coming out with deformities or, you know, happen to be like cancers or stuff like that, depending on, you know, uh, how much radiation they're going to be taking. Right. That's insane. Mm. Yeah. That's really crazy. Um, you know, you know what? Let's let me ask you this. I mean, I noticed this other article you were reading here. It says my fa my three favorite anarchists of 2016. <laughs> we, why don't we explore that one for a minute? Because I was I was okay, reading. Okay. <laughs> so if I remember correctly, I think it was Cal Molina, Derek Bros, and um, Michael uh, Michael Dean. Yes. Um, but yeah. So so that was a response. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Some it was some silly trend on a, on on fascist book. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember if someone was like uh, top my top three favorite things, and I was like, well, you know, I'll do one that's uh, you know point people on some you know towards some good information. So, um, yeah, those folks. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Derek Bros. He's he's been uh, focused on solutions longer than I have. Um, he's been doing this for like uh, for for about ten years. Right. Um, so um, lots of uh, yeah, lots of uh, community community stuff there in Houston. Uh, Houston Free Thinkers. Uh, he's run that for like ten or eleven years. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, just, uh, lots of, lots of great work. I don't really like his, uh, he's, he, re he's recently announced a bid to run for mayor of Houston, not to win, but, um, he yeah. wants to, to spread awareness. Um, but, uh, um, don't really like that too much, but at the same time, he's done a lot of, a lot of great work over the years. Um, Michael Dean, uh, he's, he's just, uh, like for all of us, uh, liber you know, young libertarian podcasters that don't know anything about, about audio. Um, he put us through, uh, you know, the Michael Dean school of audio. So, um, now our audio is uh, decent. Uh, so, <laughs> and I also was on a, on a, on a radio show with him too. Wow. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, so it was, and the other one was, uh, Cal Moline. Uh, yeah. So he's, he lives in, uh, Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Um, he has uh, an organization called Liberate RVA. And, um, what they're doing there is, uh, basically he goes out to the college campuses and, uh, he has, um, Yes, the uh, the three questions in anarchy, and uh, he's grown. Uh, he's he has a group of a couple hundred uh, of anarcho capitalists there in uh, in um, in Richmond that he's been able to uh, you know 
um, I guess, uh, bring over. And uh, they do a lot of uh, community stuff there, lots of uh, lots of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency stuff, um, right. basically just uh, organizing in the community and trying to attract more people. So um, I, I, yeah, those are just, uh, you know, three three people that, uh, you know, I, I, I think they've have done great work in the realm of solutions. Very cool, very cool. Because I, not- I noticed also, too, here that, you know, I mean, we know that the feds like to pay a lot of, you know, let's just say patriots or conservatives uh, uh, a visit, <laughs> to, to put it mildly, mildly. You know, I mean, we, we have, and, and you'll know where I'm going with this, but we have people like Madonna that'll scream and, and talk about blowing up the White House, or Rosie O'Donnell will mm-hmm. publicly bribe on Twitter, you know, politicians to change their vote with $2 million, you know, or Shabazz from the Black Panthers called for killing all the crack of babies, and Louis Farrakhan, 10,000 black guys that killed whites and cops, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, j- drunk Johnny Depp on stage talking, to, asking the question of when's the last time a celebrity assassinated a sitting president. I mean, I, these people get away with it because they're all in bed together, mm-hmm. you know. But the feds, they get mad at us when – and we talked about this briefly the, uh, on, a, on a previous show, Scott, that we as individuals like me as a veteran, I'm deemed as a domestic threat or a domestic terrorist just yeah. simply for the fact of being a veteran. And the rest of us that, you know, if you believe, if you're pro-life or pro-gun or you believe in God or anything like that, well, then you're a threat. You're a terrorist, you know, oh, oh, bad, you know. And then the feds pay us a visit because we get mad because these people are threatening to kill me simply based on the color of my skin. And you're inciting violence, inciting hatred. Mm -hmm. You get away with it. But if I were to do that, you know, you'd have, you'd be at my house that night, you know. And the reason I say that is I've already been paid a visit twice so far from the feds. And I say that because I noticed on one of your articles here, apparently the FBI recognizes the existence of liberty uh-huh. under attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was that – was, uh... That was fun. So, so, so some context here. This, this was uh, this was probably a few months after the uh, the Malheur Wildlife Refuge occupation up there in uh, Hardy County, Oregon, mm-hmm. uh, a couple a couple of few years back. Um, so this was uh, you know after it, after it kind of died down, and this was just an FBI investigatory document. Um, so I interviewed a guy named Gary Hunt. Uh, it was the first episode ah, of something I called something I, I called the direct action. Well. <laughs> so I interviewed Gary Hunt on uh, on security teams and committees of safety. Uh-huh. And um, so basically, uh, the, to, to get to it, um, yeah, uh, I somehow g- got access to this document. I'm not going to say how, but um, sure. I, because someone thought it'd be of particular interest to me. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was actually quoted by this FBI, you know, lackey um, in, in that document. So it wasn't, had nothing to do with me. I just interviewed uh, one of their, one of their, uh, you know, surveillance subjects. So. Um, <laughs> so I, I still kind of counted as, you know, uh, I still kind of counted as a win. Um, right. How, oh, ma- how many people put in FBI investigatory documents? Right. Right. It's not, not from a volume perspective, it's not good, but, um, well, from yeah. my ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I completely know. Oh, yeah. Many of us in this, what I call the Patriot Circus, because that's what it is. It's a circus. It's not even really a movement or anything. It's a circus because like everybody's at each other's throats. Turning the feds on each other, swatting each other, calling CPS on each other. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it's just a joke. But many of us are very well aware of who Gary Hunt is, and he's not very well liked. I'll like, I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I have no shame okay. in that. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understood. <laughs> but I noticed uh, one thing that um, it really caught my eye, and it's the thing I was sitting there laughing about, and not because I was. Like I told you early in the show, it's not because I was making fun, it's because I was in complete and total agreement. But there's this article, and it's called it's called "Controlled Schizophrenia: Why Celebritarians Are Glorifying Trump." Yep, yep. So that was uh, <laughs> yep. yep. That was uh, that was an article uh, written by uh, uh, my uh, co-host of the Volume Podcast. He hasn't been on there in a little while, but uh, but Kyle Reardon. Uh, that right. was uh, we used to write articles. He used to write articles for every episode of the Volume Podcast. So for folks who didn't want to listen to a two-hour podcast, they get a little summarized version uh, right. in an article. But <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so uh, controlled schizophrenia, basically for uh, for the benefit of the listeners, um, this is a term coined by Rayo, uh, you know, the main proponent of Vonu. Um and uh, the way that he explains it is uh, or i guess this is the definition that we have so it's the mental state of an of an, of an opportunistic citizen serf within the servile society who practices double think yet still uh, yet who still acts in his own best interest political crusaders are but just one example of this in action so basically it's people who 
um, you know, people are just inconsistent about everything, right? Um, like they they, uh, they claim to uh, you know be uh, constitutionalist patriots, but then you know support uh, you know uh, um, you know suppress or ban or something like that doesn't really fit, right? Um, mm -hmm. So um, that's 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 kind of the idea, or or an anarchist politician. Um, that's uh, that's that that would be uh, certainly a controlled schizophrenic position, uh, right. in my opinion. Uh, those are those are some examples. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, so basically, uh, yeah, he just kind of went through, uh, um, went through, and I'm, I'm trying to recall off off the top of my head. Um, but uh, yeah, he he kind of just uh, tied in, uh, you know, Rayo's uh, term there, and kind of, uh, I guess, I think he analyzed uh, kind of uh, the reaction to uh, to Trump by by some folks. So, right. um, yeah. I wish I could offer more on that, but I didn't write that, and that was a, a couple of years ago. I can't recall everything. Oh no, that's that. okay. <clears throat> I just I did I noticed it, and I was like, okay, this is this is a great article, and uh, <clears throat> I guess this thing, the way they're explaining it with this controlled schizophrenia, it, it can it can essentially just be applied to virtually anybody, you know, like when we saw you know Obama when he was in office for for eight years, you know, and and there was a complete just an adoration over the guy, even though no matter. <laughs> He didn't really do much of anything, you know, but there was this complete and total utter adoration for the guy. And we're seeing the same, and that was from the left, and now we're seeing the same thing from the right, you know, when it comes to Trump. And then I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, it's just like, you know, everybody's like, I, I see people on the social medias, they're sitting there saying, you know, well, how well do you think Trump's doing according to Obama? And it's just like, I really don't care what one president thinks about another one. Are they going by the Constitution? You know, I have a blue screen, so that's why it's kind of jittering in and out. <laughs> you know, gotcha, gotcha. but uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't care what one president thinks of the next. I mean, are they abiding by the Constitution? That's all I care about. You know, that that's my whole thing. And I see these people that they're adoring these politicians. I don't care whether it's local, state, or federal. And it's getting to be a little out of hand anymore, and uh, they're running rogue. They really well, it's are. Almost, it's, you've come to the point where it's almost like your politicians have become celebrities because of the fact that people are idolizing them. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten so bad that I've actually seen when, when Trump was running for, for office, I've seen people use things like hashtag Trump is Messiah. I'm like, really? You know, people are still using memes this day and they're showing Trump hand in hand with Jesus Christ saying these two men are going to bring peace to the earth. I'm like, really? Or Trump saw, is the I hand. saw like a, a, full, a full back window decal of something like that. Yeah. The it's just it's like, it's nice. like you people. <laughs> it's one thing to support a, a politician or support somebody, but when you start equating them to a messiah and saying that, you know, Trump is or has the hand of God, um, uh, you got to stop. <laughs> now, you're, now you're going a little too far with it. <laughs> right. These people. Right. Um, so Scott, I mean, do you, do you have that article up there with you? The first, the 50 things you should do now? Well, I, I still have it up here. Yeah. I mean, if you really yeah. want to go through it. Yeah. I mean, what, I mean what are some of the things on there? I, I mean, honestly, some of I the things that yeah. really blow my mind that, I mean, it, it's, it's just the fact that it's, I've thought about them before, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, well, how could we go about it? I mean, just like learning cryptography i mean people need to be like taking taking back their their words from the government and in, in, in my sense is mm -hmm. that keeping keeping everything private because of the fact that the more that they know the more that they can use against you well said. so yep, i mean I, I just feel that you know yes we should actually get back into you know learning uh, cryptography i mean it that one of my favorite shows, and this is the reason why I didn't, I, I've thought about it, but I've never really, you know, thought about applying it to today's standards was because of the fact that I used to watch that uh, show, um, uh, Turn, Washington Spies. Mm -hmm. And throughout the revolution, they actually used, you know, secret codes. So mm -hmm. it's like that, that made me actually think about it, but it's just like, okay, well, most people would just think you're a nut job today. Unless, unless you're in your own little community. Um, another thing, I mean, one of the things that, this is going to kill my kid more than anything, switch off the TV and read books. <laughs> That's what I do. I, I, I watch TV. barely watch any TV as it is. Right. And, and when I do, it's just <laughs> more along the lines of fake informationals that they have on, like, the computer or something. 
Yeah, um, but that would plummet the ratings for catching up with the Kardashians, man. Do you really want to oh do that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, lear- pretty much another thing is it's just pretty much uh, learn a basic trade. Right. Because the fact that, you know, when it comes down to it, you got to be useful. And I it'll also help that. make you money. And that's yep. another thing that I really want to get back into doing is um, I, I really like the whole gold standard. So yeah. I, I really okay. like to, you know, use, you know, silver and gold and now platinum and other other metals that you can actually use as currency instead of using this, you know, fake paper fiat currency that we got now. You know, it's yeah. funny that you mentioned the whole uh, learn a trade thing, because I thoroughly believe that everybody was brought. I'm not getting religious here. I, I don't do that. But I thoroughly believe that everybody was has a gift. You just have to you find out what it is. Some people are great at working on cars. Some are great at baking cakes. Some are great at at uh, the, the currency, like like you, you know, Shane. Or I mean, it could be anything. You know, I mean, I don't know squat of what you know about currency. I mean, you know all the ins and outs and everything about that. That's your thing. Everybody has a gift, you know. And hell, some people might have a couple few gifts for all we know. But, you know, some people go through life and never find them out and they die and never know what their gifts were. Some people flourish on them. But I think that everybody should find out what their gift is and embrace it because – and I agree with you with that with that point that you mentioned, Scott, that everybody should learn to trade because when the crap hits the fan, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to sit on your butt. If you just want to sit in your butt and you want other people to provide for you, you're going to die inside a month, right? No food, mm-hmm. no water, no nothing. You're gone. Goodbye. You know, all those people like in Hollywood that worry about their nails and all they you know, their high heels and everything like that and their plastic surgery, they're going to die inside a month and all their skin is going to be used for is an old leather saddlebag. That's it. <laughs> you know, absolutely no use. We have to we have to learn trade. What my my buddies and I used to do um, every year, we'd go like anywhere between a three to a five day survival trip. We wouldn't bring any food, no water, nothing. You know, the only thing we would bring basically is just a, a couple MREs and because we would get there early in the morning the first day, you know, make camp and we'd have our MREs for like for the breakfast thing. And then boom, that's it. We had to procure all our water, procure, you know, procure our, our food, you know, make our shelter. We had to do everything. These people need to learn these things, you know, oh, yeah. and it, it just made me think about that when you said learn a trade because what you're a machinist by, by trade. Am I correct? Yes, kind unfortunately. Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, and I went to the Acro Machining Institute, so I'm a machinist by trade, and of course, I use all, I do all kinds of other crazy stuff too. So, I mean, but it's important. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I, mean, I, I just traditionally think that people should actually get out there and, and be in the world instead of here. Right, right, right. I mean, it's this, this. Yeah, that's why I did this. Is because okay. yeah, this right here is right. rotting everybody's mind. I mean, it it does have its uses, like you guys have said before. I mean, but it's it primarily is being used for nefarious reasons, right? And and, and data collections and yeah, ninety five ninety five percent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ninety five percent people use it for entertainments. Um. Yes. Or not ninety five percent, but it's a large percentage of people that just use it for entertainment purposes only. Um. Right. For sure. But but at the same time, people actually need to start waking up and realize, and you know, take a look at what you're watching. Because once these stupid little idioms come into play inside of your programs, um, I'll just take this for example, because this is becoming a hot topic right now, is, you know, uh, pedophilia and um, transgenders. I mean, that is actually starting to flow into a lot of these programs and kids shows and and, um, adult, like another one that I usually watch or have watched is um oh what was that show uh i can't remember off the top of my head now it's been a while um oh designated survivor Mm -hmm. it was all about you know the presidency and becoming uh, this one guy was you know shoved off to the side because it's actually a real thing which is a designated survivor one person throughout uh that works for the government is taken aside and if anything happens to the entire uh president and congress then that one person um from the republicans or that one person from the democrats would then become president um right. but now in this season of it i mean they've had hardcore injected you know uh gays and transgenders into the show because of the fact that it's become a big thing well uh, 
most don't know that this new Toy Story movie um, with the Sporky, if you actually look at it, I mean, the, the poster of him is he's in the middle. He's holding a spoon over here. He's holding a fork over here. And he says, I'm not a spoon or a fork. I'm neither. And then if you look at his feet, it's actually a spork that's put on what looks to be like one of those ice cream, like scoop, like wooden yeah. scoops. And it has a rainbow on the bow on, on his foot. So, <laughs> of course, I mean, why not? Right. So, but I mean, we, with, with all these the special interest groups trying to throw in their messages at, at every single point in time, I mean, people really need to start paying attention to this, the hidden messages. Well, and it kind of reminds, reminds me of uh, US 6506148B2, if you ever Google that right there. Uh, because that within itself is a nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Mm. It's a true thing. Yep. You know? It's not even a joke. You know, no conspiracy theory. Cats out of the bag. <laughs> you but, know, what are you going to do? Another thing that, that I just like uh, to get back on to just people, people getting out there. Uh, a lot of people nowadays don't even know their neighbors. I mean, crap, I live in an apartment building and I, I, I can tell you like maybe one of the families that live up here. You know, and that's a good point. What What is your take? And I'm sorry, Scott. I don't mean to interrupt you, brother. No, go ahead. But I, I, I want to get Shane's uh, uh, um, input on this. I mean, because when you look back in the days, Scott brings up a very valid point. Communities knew each other because they hung out on each other's porches. Some houses still have those big front porch. But now when you're going down the road, you see houses that really don't have a porch but they have a huge enclosed deck in the backyard with a privacy fence where now they're secluding themselves mm -hmm. from their, you know, and the communities don't know each other. What is your take on all that? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I know when I was growing up, um, I mean, uh, I was always, uh, with my brother, we were always outside playing with, uh, with the neighbor kids. Um, I mean, we, we knew everyone on our street. Um, and I mean, we lived, we lived close to the government indoctrination camp I went to. So like all, a lot of my, a lot of uh, people I knew lived around there too. Right. Um, the parents knew each other, uh, and such. And, um, there were, it seemed like there was still a kind of a, you know, a small little community thing there, at least, uh, at least to some extent. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's certainly, that's, that's certainly going away. Um, and you know, it only, it only plays into the hands of the state, right? right. Um, if, uh, you know, if you don't, if, you know, if, if you don't know your neighbor, um, you know, um, then, and, and you believe, uh, you know, that, uh, everyone's out to get you, but that's, uh, you know, on TV or, um, yeah, you believe, you believe everyone's out to get you then, um, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's not going to, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's not, not good. Not good. So that, that's, that's kind of my thought. I mean, if it plays into the hands of the state, um, if there's no, uh, um, you know, the, you know, local, you know, local community sorts, sorts of stuff, it works. Um, it works. And they're certainly trying to get away from that. Um, right. just as they are, uh, it seems like trying to get away, you know, get away from the family and all of these other things as well. So, mm -hmm. um, it's just, um, uh, things that, uh, you know, pr have, uh, you know, proven to be, uh, you know, stable and, uh, sound and, workable before uh you know toss toss those out although you know their uh, you know their uh, their socialist and communist uh, economic policies uh haven't worked uh, you know ever either but they aren't going to toss those out so uh, right you know <laughs> well let me ask you I mean, you mentioned the socialist communist thing i mean i'm a firm believer and i believe scott is too um that we're already technically a socialist country and we already have socialized this socialized medicine we have the socialized welfare system you know, every single entitlement program out there is technically unconstitutional. We're not supposed to have it. Every police, department and agency, departments. Right. Every department and agency of the federal government, which is over uh, 2,100, are all unconstitutional because the federal government was never meant to regulate every aspect of our Most lives. Most of them are social programs anyway. Right. I mean, so what is your take on all of that? Yeah. So um, there was a uh, there was a recent president that said something along the lines of "We'll never be a socialist country" or something like that, um, mm -hmm. and then a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, seconded um, such thing. It was, it was it was Dolan who put that out. I'm pretty sure on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, it, it's hilarious. Uh, this would have been like the first one of the first eight episodes I did on Liberty Attack Radio back when I started, uh, you know, live radio back in uh, February of 2015. Was that uh, uh, we did an episode on you know the Communist Manifesto, and we just huh. walked through all the planks and at that, that right. time. There were like six or seven of them that, you know, you know, we weren't, you know, we, we haven't, you know, just gone down the path of the Communist Manifesto. I mean, we're just blowing, blowing through it, you know, knocking them off one by one. Um, so 
I don't know. I, I, it's, it's hard to classify. Uh, it's hard to classify the economic system of the United States. I mean, it's, it's a really interesting blend of fascism, and, fascism, and, and communism. Because you have the corporation, you have the protectionism, um, you right. have those sorts of things. But you also have the welfare state, um, and you have, uh, um, you know, socialized schooling and, um, and uh, all of those things too. So, um, I mean, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's an interesting blend of fascism and so fascism, fascism, socialism, and communism. Right. Um, which. Yeah, socialism just the road to communism, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's not good, and uh, I it's frustrating because uh, you know as someone uh, when I when I uh, I came to anarchism, um, the first the first I guess major thing was economics. I studied Austrian economics, uh, free market economics, right? And um, it, it it's it's so sad to watch. Um, like conservatives nowadays um like when they're you know all against the banker bailouts but when it's the farmer bailouts it's okay um and i understand <laughs> right. you know it's it's an, it's, an, it's you know it's i i understand like you know bad you know bad times i, I get that but um you know the the idea you know to, how to not be a controlled schizophrenic is to be uh you know a consistent advocate of freedom um to be right. against all socialism be against all communism be against all coercion um to be against all of those things not just when it's convenient for you or not just whenever um it's uh it's your it's uh, not your guy <laughs> office um and yeah i think that's kind of the, the the main the main the main thing that's that's wrong with uh with with things today is i mean no one's you know really i mean it doesn't seem there's a lot of a lot of uh, you know conviction to to ideals or or philosophies or anything like that it's just right. um you know whatever whatever uh, you know, the government controlled media says, uh, you know, whatever a politician says, that's just kind of uh, how it is. And yeah, they might change their mind and we'll change our mind, too, because we don't I mean, we don't know up from down, you know, left from right. And uh, we'll just go whichever way the wind blows. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I mean, we we actually covered the uh, the 10 planks of communism not that long ago, not too long ago. We did that and it was explaining we I, like you guys, we were just nailing one right after the other, just going right mm -hmm. through and explaining. Well, this is it. Well. You people call it this act and this bill and this resolution and this and that and the other, blah, blah, blah. And you guys have no idea this is a plank of communism, you know. And then mm -hmm. this is it, – it just blows my mind because when you look at a lot of these unions in America ran by the Communist Party, much of the governors ran by the Socialist Party, you know, you have um, – the Democrats are always screaming democracy, 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 you know, and it was just like – well, all the while, Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution tells us we're a constitutional republic. You know, mm -hmm. right. we're, we're, we're not a democracy, this communist, this socialist, I mean, or any, we're not any of those things. You know, and, and, and it, they, they've used democracy so much for so long now, it's become like a household word. You know, and I've heard countless other uh, conservatives or, or self proclaimed patriots, and they're sitting there saying, oh, yeah, they're giving great speeches. And I'm like, wow, this is really a good speech. And they start talking word democracy. I'm like, click. I turned you off. <laughs> you're gone. You're done. You use the word democracy. You really don't. You're not awake yet. You haven't even gotten out of bed. <laughs> words. Words mean things. Words are right. important. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. true. Well, you know, that's 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 another. I guess another. I, I guess another thing is is verbicide. The the definition. You know, the definitions of words changing over time. Yep. Um, like uh, like liberal. Um, you know, I, I would consider myself to be a liberal in certain, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people would say, oh my gosh, you're no classically liberal. Um, yeah, there's like, a uh, difference. Ludwig von Mies and, uh, and, uh, you know, the, you know, the early Austrians, classical, you know, classical liberal. Um, right. but that word today, oh gosh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to use that term if uh, you're trying to describe uh, an ad, you're, uh, you describe yourself as an advocate of the free market. That's not a good word to use. Um, so yeah, wor words mean things. Uh, they're important, and that's why, um, which we 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 did on you know episodes or I guess seasons one and two on the volume podcast. You got to start with definitions. Get everyone on the same page. Right. Uh, you know you can't build you can't build up to anything else unless you have a foundation, uh, a similar understanding. Even if you even if you have different definitions for something, um, just agree on agree on agree on a definition for for the duration of the conversation. Um, right. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like when we had a show not that long ago about the uh, the original Thirteenth Amendment. Speaking of words, you know, because what we consider to be honor today, like it's an honor to be here and it's an honor to meet you. Well, according to our founding fathers, honor was a bad word. You know, that was that was kind of like, you know, to them, you, you were receiving honors or you were receiving special privileges, kind of like what our politicians do. An now. Entitlement. They, yeah. And all these entitlements and special privileges were also considered to be honors back during the founding of this country. And then, of course, like kind of like that flipped. It's the same thing when you look at um, the Black's Law Dictionary of 1910, the second edition, right, where you can see that unalienable and inalienable have clearly two different definitions, you know. But then when you go anything after that, 
now unalienable and inalienable have the same definition. It's like, no, 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 no hold on. Yeah. You know, they have the different, they have different definitions because if, I'm sure you remember that, or you know that in 1950, there were several Supreme Courts that took God out of schools. And after that, they slowly, little at a time, chipped away at, at not teaching the Constitution at our schools anymore. So people started forgetting that they had unalienable rights and doubted them by the creator. And they started believing they had inalienable rights and doubted them by government. You know, right. and that's, I think that's why they're, they're combined. They, they had combined those two words, my yield. Well, that's just yeah. like when we just did our uh, our tax show. I mean, if you look at the tax definitions, they don't mean what the what words like the, their definitions. They they might be traditional words like you and I already know, but they don't actually mean that right. in, in the actual yeah. code itself. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's just like you know what what we might think of is is wages or income or you know employees income you know whatever. Yeah, employee or employer. I mean, we know the definitions of that because we use those kind of words every day. But if you're talking mm -hmm. about the actual code itself, it doesn't apply to any of us. No, it doesn't. Let me get let me get your ta take on that, uh, Shane, if you don't mind. I mean, this whole issue of taxation and stuff. What do you, What do you think about it all? Yeah, so I'll 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 go back to my I, I guess uh, kind of the beginning of our conversation here that uh, um, you know um, kind of uh, the the non-aggression principle of libertarianism uh, the initiation of force is immoral, mm -hmm. um, so that'd be things like murder, um, rape, theft. Um, so, you know, if, if, if I, if I come over to your house and steal $50 from you, Joe, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get put in a cage and, you know, rightfully so I stole from you. Right. Right. Um, but let's say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, let's say I'm, uh, you know, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, Sen Senator John and, uh, you know, I come into your pocket to get my salary. Well, you know, what's the difference between those two things? Um, there's, there's, there's not, um, taxation is, uh, yeah, taxation. I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, there was uh, it was trending on, uh, on Google for a while. There was a, you know, a tax has, was a hashtag uh, taxation is theft. Um, but I mean, that's, 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 that's what it is. Um, there's, there's, there's no other way around it. Um, it's the, uh, it's the stealing of, uh, one's hard earned money. Um, <clears throat> doesn't matter what the purpose is for, um, if, whether it's for, uh, whether it's for a nuclear war or whether it's for the children, um, it doesn't matter what it's for. It's uh, it's still theft. If if I hold right. up a gun to you on the corner and I steal fifty dollars, but I promise you to donate twenty dollars to the Red Cross, <laughs> would you consider that to be morally just? Absolutely because I just, not. Going to contribute a little of it. No, yeah, you right. do it at your own free will when you pay your taxes when you go and sign your uh, that waiver. That right. that that's the the tax code doesn't apply to us. That's what people need right. to really understand. The IRS tax code is constitutional, but at the same time, we're just doing it by, over our own liability because right. we've never been taught any better. Yeah, we're voluntary, yeah. volunteering for it. So as soon as you go to do your tax returns, as soon as you sign that, that that's that's pretty much stating that you work for the federal government and that everything that's on your W-2 or your w, uh, you know, W-4 or 1040 is correct. And you turn it in, they give you a small refund and you just said okay here it is yep right i yep. completely yep. agree uh, with both of you right there with you yeah, or I mean, the I guess the the libertarian approach to this is uh, I mentioned Derek Rose earlier. Um, the first time I had him on, uh, he's he's something called an agorist, and it's basically trading in the black and gray markets. Uh, it's uh, it's another uh, I guess libertarian strategy, basically, um, you know, uh, growing the counter economy to starve the state. So if enough of the economy shifts to the black and gray markets, they don't get their their fees and their taxes and all that sort of stuff, yep, and right. then the government collapse. I don't. It's not going to play like that. I don't think Sam Conklin was correct, but nonetheless, um, there are agorists out there. And uh, Derek Rose, the first time I interviewed him, he's like, I haven't filed an income tax in like five years um, oh you haven't like so that's no derek bros oh, um, oh he came okay. on my he came on my radio show and said that and i was like holy crap like you came out here and said that well that's what um, we're working on I mean, right that's, now that's what me and joe were talking about the other day even if you you sit there and you just don't file i mean they're still taking your money yeah so we, we're, we've the actually only thing gotten we've actually gotten to the point where we now know how to or pretty much know how to legally sit there and get that money back Right, absolutely. You can get at least, you can get at least up to three years back from the IRS. They'll they'll allow you to do that, but you have to have your tax returns in order to prove it, which is ridiculous because we know that, that they have they, the they records. Have <laughs> but they'll only allow you to do three years if you can prove it. But uh, the only thing we're having a problem with is we're trying to find out what do we tell our employers? Do we simply you know put on our W four is ninety nine, or is there a certain code or certain yeah there's got to be a certain code to actually yet. become tax exempt i know that we have to actually go through there's an actual process and a form that we need to get to be right. able to become tax exempt 
Yeah, we are working on that, though. Yeah. Because I'm tired of paying my taxes. I'm sick of looking at gross and net. <laughs> you know? It gets ridiculous after a while. You're like, it's, I'm done it's, with this. It's just retarded because once once we sit there and turn around and we start we get that money back, what what's the need to sit there and turn around and do, keep doing it every year? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you, Shane. Where now? Me, I actually want to start tuning into your Vanu podcast because you know after right reading on. these articles and stuff like that and having this conversation, I am incredibly intrigued to actually listen to you. So, where can people find you? Sure, sure. So uh, I guess uh, the uh, so yeah, vanupodcast.com would be the first one. Vanu is spelled V as in Victor, O, and is in Nancy U podcast.com. Um, so yeah, so you can find the podcast there. Uh, we are on uh, season three right now. We just wrapped up uh, talking about um, th- uh, you know, basically 3D printing uh, guns and gun parts uh, with Ivan the Troll, who's now uh, infamous on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Since uh, Senator Melendez from New Jersey uh, lobby Twitter to take down his account, so I interviewed, had him on a couple times, we talked about that, um, and uh, I mean, yeah, season one's a philosophy of Anu, and uh, we always recommend people start there. I know listening through an entire podcast is, um, you know, not always ideal, but at the same time, uh, you know, we start with the philosophy, and it's it's uh, it's crucially important to to the action of Anu. Right. Um, so yeah, vanupodcast.com. Um, and then uh, I would say uh, libertyunderattack.com. dot com. Um, so the articles that uh, that you mentioned uh, tonight, most of them can be found there. Um, but also, I mean, this has been like just basically I, I've for the past couple of years, I've uh, basically just been an archiving service for for uh, the Patriot movement and for uh, um, for basically just anything else I want to ar- archive. Uh, political, uh, right. so, there's political archive. There's um, uh, I guess there's. Let me see. I don't even remember off, off the top of my head now. Um, there's uh, yeah, all sorts of uh, all sorts of archives. Profiling archive um, for uh, one of Calvary's articles a few years ago. But yeah, lots of uh, lots of stuff there. Um, and then also uh, I, I mentioned in the beginning of the in, uh, beginning of this episode that uh, we have Liberty Type publications. So uh, if, if uh, you uh, you guys or uh, anyone in your audience uh, has a manuscript or you want, want to write a book or something like that, and uh, you're wondering uh, how to get uh, you know how to uh, you know go about the process, uh, we can certainly help. Uh, liberty under attack uh, dot com for that one so um yeah i think that's uh i think that's uh that's it well, I well appreciate you know what? appreciate you oh no i'm sorry go ahead i didn't mean to interrupt you oh no i was just gonna i was just uh thanking you for having me on the show oh okay <laughs> you're very welcome actually it's been a, it's been an incredible honor and a privilege to have you on i mean i have nothing but mad respect for for you and what you do and everything um and i did notice that on uh liberty under attack about the publications like oh I have so many things written, so you know, just so many things. I was like, I didn't know where to begin, where to go for anything like that. And then when I saw that website, I was like, there it is. That's it, you know. So I'd like to actually publish my own stuff, you know. So um, yeah, I will definitely be getting in contact with you guys on that aspect. But uh, um, Scott and I, you know, we appreciate you having on, uh, having you on here, or you coming on here, I should say. Um, and we'd love to have you back here in the future, you know, if you're willing. For sure. You know? Yeah, of I course. Mean, of course. Absolutely. You're, you're like a wealth of knowledge there. I mean, do you have anything there, Scott? Or Oh, no. I mean, it's just it's, – I'm just like keep reading these, these articles. I mean, each each one I have to read more than once because of the fact that it's just like, okay, well, did I catch it all? So let me go over it again. <laughs> right? <laughs> Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon. 